thinking about getting pigs for your homestead, ranch, or farm, we're going to show you how we did with pigs this year and whether we're going to stay with it. We're going to do all that right now. from Sniping Around a Ranch. In today's video, we're going to give you an update on where we're at with our pigs. And if you've ever thought about getting pigs on your homestead, you really want to watch this video. Because we're going to go through the entire process of how we got them all the way up to where we are right now. And at the end of the video, we're going to close with why we will or will not continue on with having adult pigs on the homestead. And we're really going to get into why that is. Anyway, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our homestead related videos. So pigs have been, well let's just say they've been a lot of work this year. And it all started at the beginning. See our plan was to get one or two feeder pigs and just fatten them up so we can have some, uh, some pork and some bacon. That was homegrown right here on the ranch. Unfortunately it didn't work out that way. We had a lot of trouble trying to find feeder pigs in the area or piglets in the area. And what we ended up finding were adult pigs. And we ended up uh, getting them for free. They were, they were almost like a rescue. The pigs were in some really bad shape. And, and if you look at the videos that we'll be showing, you're going to see that they were really thin. They were big time underweight. And we're talking about two, three-year-old pigs. Um, so we weren't even sure they were going to make it. But we were not prepared to get adult pigs. So we ended up driving, um, we did a transfer, I mean we didn't even have a trailer for hauling pigs. And so we borrowed a trailer which we ended up purchasing from the person who borrowed it to us. Uh, met the person, we loaded them up and we brought them back here. And we put them in a dog kennel, because that's all we had set up. We had a dog kennel, we had uh, dug some uh, a pool for them, in fact you can watch that video, again there will be a link in the description. Um, and then we just went to town trying to build a pig pen area. And so it was about three days that they were in a dog panel area. And dog, the dog panels do not hold pigs very well. Um, they did get out twice. Um, really wasn't that difficult getting them back in, but it's definitely not something you want to make a habit of. So we got them into their new pig pen area, and they, they really, really loved it. And we're going to go talk about what they did to the pig pen area at the end of the video. So once we got the pigs, you know, everything just kind of went well. We, they have not gotten out of the pig pen area. It's held fine. Uh, we did have some issues with their shelter. I, I think we ended up doing three different versions of the shelter because they are really, really rough uh, on shelters. And um, if you haven't watched the video of uh, making our pig pen or pig shelter, go ahead and check that out. Again, we'll have a link for that in the description as well. But that, that one has held up really well. So it was pretty much just feeding them twice a day. They fattened up and got really healthy. Um, we're doing great. We had a boar and two sows. So when you have a boar and two sows in the same pen, the obvious happens. And so what we ended up having was piglets. Now it's about 114 days. Uh, pigs are, are pretty regular on their uh, gestation cycle or whatever you call it, basically through their pregnancy. It's about 114 days. We had family visiting. So we had actually taken a trip um, back home for something and then uh, I had my mom and dad come down. And, and so the plan was when they left we would have a week um, to, to get ready for piglets coming. Um, additionally we had heard and been told that when a sow is getting ready to give birth, it'll kind of separate itself from the other pigs about three days prior to the birth. Well, what you, what you read and, and what people tell you isn't always true, and it was not the case. Uh, it was not the case at all. I went out to feed um, the morning that my parents were going to be leaving and happened to be there right in time to see the first piglet come. It was actually kind of a cool experience. Uh, these piglets are the first uh, 
first livestock to give birth here on the homestead and I, I got to have my parents and entire family come out and, and see the sunset and, and piglets being born. So while it was an amazing experience in the morning watching you know the miracle of birth, it was not a great experience because we had nothing set up. Like I said, I, I thought I had some time to uh, like a week to, to build everything and I didn't. So I hurriedly made a, a shelter that actually worked really well and then we kind of used dog kennel fencing to uh, kind of block off a, a separate area for the uh, piglets to just keep them safe. Because I had heard that sometimes a boar will kill the piglets to, to kind of speed up the process of the sow going in, into heat again. That didn't work at all. We had nine piglets and over the next two days the boar went through those dog kennel panels like they they weren't even there and and both times it happened the piglet unfortunately ended up being killed or crushed by the boar and so we had come out and we had found uh, the second piglet dead and the piglets were just running around in the pen and they were fine and so we did like hey before we repair everything let's just see how it went and quite honestly it went great in fact the boar and the piglets just ended up kind of bonding <laughs> and, and being together it was a, a pretty cool experience the piglets were not for us here on, on the on the homestead so what we ended up doing is we we weaned them it was about four weeks uh, through the weaning process and it, it could have been a lot faster they were eating solid food three or four days after they were born um, and again we weren't really set up for catching the piglets when we uh, ended up selling them and, and so our, some friends came up to, to, to get the piglets and it didn't go well so when we first started we just hey we'll grab the piglets and we'll put them in the back of their truck well after getting a couple pigs that way chasing them around taking forever we decided that wasn't going to work so we ended up getting them into that birthing area we had set up and there was holes all in it we caught one pig, piglet that way and um, before we had to do some repairs and, and then we end up getting all the piglets back into the uh, the birthing area and then what we did is we took some fencing some goat fencing and we just kinda walked it through the uh, kennel area so that all the piglets were in one corner and at that point we had a dog uh, carrier and we put the piglets in the dog carrier and we would transfer it over to the truck and uh, and that worked was it the eff an effective way or the best way absolutely not but it worked and again we are our experience as pigs has been since we got them in May so we're learning as we go along so we did sell seven piglets the problem is this the sale of the piglets doesn't even come close to what the feed costs for the adult pigs are we probably spent over seven hundred dollars in feed um, on, on these three pigs and the amount of piglets we would have to sell to, to make up for that feed cost really just isn't there so that's a big negative the second negative uh, of the pigs is they're big uh, our pigs are four or five hundred pounds I mean they are huge and the boars probably five six hundred pounds so I, I'm not really comfortable with having the kids go into the pig pen by themselves is that are our pigs me no we've got some really mellow pigs in fact the boar uh, I have just been shocked at how mellow it is even when the sows are in heat just no issues whatsoever with the boar some of the female pig or some of the sows they can get pushy at times but they've never bit us or anything like that they're also really really hard on a, on on your your pen area or the fields wherever you put them in and they just absolutely destroy everything it doesn't even matter how much food you give them they're pigs that's what they, they do they they root around and they tear up ground and so when we look at the cost of the pigs, the damage they do to the, the land that encompasses that pig pen, to us it's just not worth having adult pigs. Again, 
there's not money to be made in it and we're still going to have to feed a piglet if we decide to use it as a feeder pig and so what we're, we've decided to do is that over the winter months we're, we're going to get rid of our pigs the boar is a registered boar we have the paperwork on it and so hopefully by selling the boar and we may or may not keep one sow we're not sure yet um, but we're, we're, we're kind of leaning towards we'll have uh, some more piglets so we'll end up keeping uh, one or two of the piglets and then we'll just go and do feeder pigs from here on out hopefully this video has helped you out if you have looking at getting pigs as, as not just feeder pigs but just as a staple part of your homestead raising adult pigs if you've got a lot of land and a lot of fenced in area, you can rotate them around and kind of soften up or prevent the ground from getting tore up too bad. But for us, we're getting rid of it. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment, hit the like button, tell us how you're doing with your pigs or what your thoughts are on getting pigs. And if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our homestead related videos. This is Todd from Sniping Around a Ranch. Have a great day.